Hi, these are uh, additional lectures produced by the Functional Movement and Fitness Corporation, or Seize Health. Uh, this isn't part of our regular tutorial series or educational series. This is some select top. These are select topic videos. They deal with a very narrow area, usually because a case has come up. Um, and my name is Mark Brzezinski again. Oh, excuse me. This video is about um, posterior lat lateral instability of the knee and that it requires thinking more than can this be a meniscus. These lectures are educational and not intended to manage individual patients. They are not a substitute for seeing healthcare professionals. Among the reasons are patients vary in no brief presentation substitutes for formal training. So my name is Mark Brzezinski and my background has been discussed in earlier videos and on the web page and you can freeze it if you want to read it. So um, a couple general considerations about what we do. You know we look at functional movement first and the question is do we need to do anything and um, the Sometimes, I mean, if you're restoring, if we're dealing with the whole complex, the whole shoulder complex, and we can restore function, remove pain, and there's no evidence of long-term sequelae, then the question would be, well, why do we really need to do anything else other than uh, get the patient functional again? So that question always needs to be asked. And that comes up, for instance, in cardiology as another as an example. If somebody does very well on a stress test, why do an angiogram? Because you're then you're stuck, and you may end up doing a procedure on a plaque that won't necessarily go anywhere. And uh, the other thing I want to point out about this video is, and you see this a lot in the field, the just stating it video. You know, people will be going through an exam and they will say, well, you have to look for hypermobility syndrome, or you uh, have to look for pregnancy, or um, make part of your exam a uh, single leg squat, and if not, it may show instability. But then they actually don't tell you what to do afterwards. The only reason this is just a snippet, it's not intended as a full exam video it's addressing a particular issue and so um, but in general you actually have to answer those questions and it's pretty clear in the videos or it at least is suggested that the people don't actually know what to do with the information and a lot of these terms whether it's kinetic chain hypermobility um, you know um, the kinetic chain dependence of the knee on the hip and the ankle uh, is something they've learned but they haven't been able to address yet. So the case that sort of got me talking about this is a patient in uh, their late 40s who developed anterior lateral knee pain and instability. They were seen by their physician who said a non-specific exam and ruled out uh, a meniscal tear. And so uh, I looked at the patient, and the patient actually had um, the uh, instability between the fibula and tibula. So the posterior tibia fibula ligament was torn, or seemed to be some damage to the uh, arcuate ligament, and also some damage to the, uh, ga head, the lateral head of the gastrocnemius. So when we look at these slides, you can see that the stability of the knee is dependent on a lot more, and we're focusing on the posterior lateral portion here, on a lot more than just a meniscus. And so, and that's probably why so many people can go by, like myself, uh, and do plyometrics, climb mountains with torn meniscus for decades. And so, uh, in the posterior lateral compartment, Besides the structures we just mentioned, popliteus muscle, the biceps femoris, uh, the oblique popliteal ligament, 
all play a major role in instability in this region, and to some degree even the iliotibial band. And so they need to be considered in the exam. So um, if you're interested, like I, I had pointed out, this isn't going to go through how to examine for each one of these components, but the, you know that's available on the internet or in you can find textbooks that'll describe how to uh, find problems in these individual areas. In this particular patient, um, as you would expect, uh, they couldn't bear weight very successfully, and so um, you know then there was an issue of the treatment plan for this particular patient because of the instability, but um, the main pur purpose of this is to consider the other things in the region. They do get damaged, and this holds for other joints too. And even the attachments are vastly more complicated. The iliotibial band does not have one attachment. It attaches to five structures, and so, um, you know, sometimes we just want to look at it from a functional standpoint. But when we're looking at things specifically, in this case, it's very important to know that the interosseous membrane between the tibia and fibula is unstable. Um, also to point out that um, for these higher tears, for the, you know, the uh, more proximal uh, ligament tear, tibia fibula ligament tear, um, that the fibula head could either be... Um, very hypermobile or hypomobile. But again, the other thing we need to consider is, and you'll see this in the common peroneal nerve um, uh, referred to by a whole range of names. You know, it's a branch of the sciatic nerve. And commonly, when people think about it, they think in terms of foot drop. Um, but the um, the point here is that uh, the nerve does run through this area, and when we have instability in this region, and uh, we have either a motor dysfunction or um, lateral uh, changes in sensation or burning pain laterally in the calf, consider that the common peroneal nerve uh, has been injured. You know, obviously we want to consider the arteries in this area, but hopefully I don't have to tell people at this point we need to check peripheral pulses and make sure that there is no um, risk to the arterial system of the leg. So again, uh, you have to look at the other structures other than the major ones. You know, there could be five tests for a meniscal tear, but people rarely go over tests for these other structures. And ask the question, I'm sorry for capitalizing the in and need, um, do we actually need in, to do anything more or um, is just restoration of the movement sufficient? So again, I'm not going to go through this, but these lectures are intended for educational purposes.